Hello guys, welcome to more Trim Tanks. In today's video we are going to be doing quite a few things. We're going to feed the tanks, we're going to fix the light over here that's been bugging me for a little while, testing to replace it. And we're going to test some new food and uh, I think in the second part of the video we'll do a uh, water change in this tank down here because yeah this tank has been a little bit slow with the babies. I do see babies jump in there but they're actually survival rate is pretty slow. pH in that tank might be a little bit on the low side, it's below 5 which is yeah, just a little bit too low and uh, yeah we'll see if we, we take it from there right so but first let's uh, get our tanks fed today we're going to try it's a new food but it's an old new food that I've used before and this is Shirakura Ibidama I've used this before and the reason guys I went back to this is because I actually know that this food is uh, solid it's quite a solid good food right it's Mostly, if I remember rightly, it is all vegetable matter that's in it. So that's the way I want to go going forward. It is less processed food, more vegetable matter, more fibre, and uh, more food that doesn't break up right. So watch for that in future videos. And so let's see what this looks like. Yeah, so I bought quite a few of these packets. Just because I remember liking this food a lot. So these are 80 gram packets, so we have three of them to play with. Because guys, when you start breeding lots and lots of shrimp, you have a lot of little mouths to feed. Okay, so the shape of this is in a little square tab shape. Right, and yeah, you know, the only thing I don't like about this is, is that they're in these Mylar bags. I know Mylar probably keeps the food very, very good and well, but I think it's probably, the camera's probably focusing more on my face than the food that you can see here. It's a little tub, it's like the perfect size for our shrimp. Right? So we're going to feed that today. And we're also going to be changing the light over here. Let me show you the light. Because we'll do this in order. I actually think I can see the receipt here, so we'll do that as well. Guys, I'm not sure if this light over here if it is the same light on this tank or not, because this one looks a little bit bigger and the one that's on the tank and I think this one might only be 5 watts which is really really low this one is 10 watts and it's much bigger and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes from there and so let's uh, actually get the food into the tanks first let me find a little dish anything will do this little dish here top of a jar we'll do just to put our food in to start with because yeah yeah, Mylar bags are not the best for getting your hands in and out of like, reasonably quick. Yeah, this food is pretty nice looking. Look at it. It's pretty nice looking. So we're going to put this into my bee shrimp tank specifically. In the tanks where there is a lot of shrimp guys, we'll put a couple of bits in like the bottom tank down here. There is, there's quite a lot of shrimp in there now. There's more than probably a hundred odd shrimp. So we're going to put in two or three pieces. But everything else guys, we're going to put in just one, one piece like this. Oh. What? And what has changed from last week? Let me think about this a second. And there's babies in this tank now. The tank that we were having a little bit of problems with. There's uh, a lot of young in this tank that you haven't seen. I think I actually managed to save some footage of them for you guys. Did I put anything in here? I can't remember. Let's put this in. So there's food in here. There's food in here, there's babies in here, and this is where we have the, 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 the basically boa that have a lot of galaxy genetics in them as well, so there's a mix of boa and galaxy pintos in this time. These guys had babies, you saw them last week, they're, they're coming more and more out to the front. Crystals, breeding like the clappers like usual. Most of these tanks get at least one piece of food because there's a decent amount of shrimp in them nowadays. And, uh, yeah, I think maybe the only one that we won't feed right now is this one because we're going to do a water change on this at some point in this video of this one here. Because I'm not happy at how uh, the shrimp react in this tank to food, so it leads me to believe that there maybe is possibly something else going on with the tank. And I, I touched on it briefly a little bit there, I think it might be, it might be that the pH is a little bit low, and if it's so low, the, the bacteria in the tank is struggling to cycle, the tank may be a little bit polluted or something like that, right? So the way I'm thinking of fixing this is by actually adding 
our new water to the tank. So we have water there already set to go. These tanks have been cycled. What's funny with this tank, guys, remember this was the one that was blue. Can you even see over here? Now this was the one that looks blue. And I think it might be the glass. Because I've done quite a few water changes on here. And it still looks kind of the same. Uh, these one, this one here is an other tank. And we'll have to actually check on this sooner or later. Because it's been a week since you saw the last video of me testing this for ammonia. And there was a decent amount of ammonia. So we need to check tanks like this one here periodically, maybe not every week, maybe every second week or something like that for this ammonia level to make sure that it's actually dropping down and the tank is actually cycling. Did I put anything in here? I don't think I did. Alright, so let me see, do we have any more B-Shrimp tanks? And we're going to keep this food guys for B-Shrimp because I have a plan with our Aneos and other uh, shrimp because I've noticed that my Neocardina population in here has kind of dwindled a little bit and I think it's because I, I, I'm feeding this tank like I'm feeding my bee shrimp and yeah, it's not a lot of food. It's not a lot of food, right? So we have this tank here to put in, in the corner. I think that's all the bee shrimp tanks done. Okay, so let me just put this food back in here. And you see the issue I have with this food here is, yeah, it's just... These Mylar Pakis are maybe, maybe they're great for keeping food fresh and whatever else, but if you're going to make bigger packages guys, if you're going to sell food in bigger quantities like this, I prefer a tub as a shrimp breeder, I prefer a tub. Guys, I don't know if I said it, but if you like the kind of content like this, then please do smash that like button, because I keep on, I keep on forgetting to see if this actually works, where you smash the like button and it glows, because when I've checked it, it doesn't work. Hmm. More coffee, right? So we're going to feed our other shrimp. And guys, you should always be checking your food because I had quite a nasty uh, little infestation of my tetra tubs. You, you guys knew that I fed the tetra tubs to this lot of shrimp. Um, there's no more tetra tubs because they were absolutely infested. The tub was this full of food. And it was absolutely infested with mites, little mites, all over the place. Right? So we're going to go back to the trust, trusty, tried and tested uh, flakes. Right? So we'll just go over here, you'll see. I'm going to give uh, my over early this. you see it will make them go berserk. Can you come even see away over here? Uh, I think it can. I think it can. Right? So we're going to put a little bit in every turn. A little vase because it's drinking the food. A little bit in there, or a lot, I should say. And we're measuring it out, guys. It's just this little scoop here, and you just have to put in what you think is a good amount. So we used to put in a pinch every other day. Remember, this tank is a little bit low. Maybe we have to pop that one up. So all of our, all of our shrimp and fish, guppies love this type of food. The anglers they love this type of food. Right, but we also have some Bruce and Rose Plek on here, right? So they, this type of food isn't a map for them because basically they won't be able to see it. So we must change over to a bigger pellet, a bigger fabric. Right? So I'm just going to go back to these Pleco spirulina wafers, which will eventually sink, 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 sink. And you can see the Bristol Plecos here, Bristol Rose Plecos are out in the open. I didn't put any in here, did I? Alright, we have to put some into that tank down there as well. We've got that tank there. Anywhere where we have a pleco, like this this type of food that you have, like a powder type of food, typically isn't going to be enough. Right, so there's a food in the tanks. Let's look at this light over here. Let's, uh, do, let's do the unboxing first of our new light. Actually, let's remove the old one because there's no point in having the old one actually here if we need to replace it, right? So, yeah, this, this light has lasted a while. This was from my Aqua L Green Jade tank setup video. I think this was the one here. This one. So, th no, this was a 10 watt one. So, the one that we've got is a replacement for this one. You can see here, um, I think I can see partially what the issue is here. Some of the LEDs in the middle have burnt out, you can see here. 
and there's a big split in the glass, so I'm not sure if that's anything to do with it. But um, yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section below how long does your bot lights typically last? Do they last forever or what? But this is uh, a bin job now. A bin job. So let's get the new one. So this one's a white one, and I went with a plant and sun one this time. This other one has a higher Kelvin rate in the black one that I just put down. I think it was maybe 8 or... I think it was about 8,000 Kelvin. I think this one is... No, this one's 8,000. I think that one was 10,000. This one had a little bit of blue light to it, this one. So let's just get this in the box. Guys, wait until you see the babies in this tank. The other day when I looked in the tank, I did get some footage of it, which you'll see as well, if you haven't seen already. The, the, I was just in shock because there were so many little babies really, really close to the edge. So look at this, this is the size of the box for the light. Well, I like Aqua L as a brand. I like them as a brand. They're, they're good. They've been good to me in the past. And if something is good, you can see guys, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought this light with my own money if I didn't think it was any good. Right? So you can see the difference here. Look. You see the amount of LEDs, there's like three, three rows in there. I think there's only two holes in this one. So I'm saying they're like the same light, but they're not. The same, I don't know if you can even see that close to this camera, but they're clearly not the same. Clearly not the same. So let's get this little box unboxed. I'm trying to remember, what is this good for? Yeah, there's a little bit... There's a little bit you stick on to the light here somewhere. I can't remember how to do this. It's been a while since I had an aqua light. Just this little bit of helps it go onto the glass that a little bit tighter. All right. So this light, how much was it? So I got this one reduced. I paid 699 kroners, which is if you had to directly convert this into say. US dollars, it would probably be about $60 maybe, $60, which is okay for a light. I was expecting to pay over 100 for a light for, for some time. But I think this one was also reduced. Campaign, I think it says campaign rebate, so the, yeah, it was reduced, so there was almost $30 off this light. So this was, this was $100 light. Looks quite nice. So the, the only thing I didn't like about aqua lights before is the amount of light that spills through the top and through the sides of this one. But this looks like an improvement on the ones that I got before because a lot of my lights are still aqua lights in here. All these ones here, all aqua lights. Aqua lights here, aqua lights there. Yeah. So they've been they've been quite good for me. Aqua lights. Let's uh, let's get this on here, and we'll see. How great it is. Now bear in mind there is a lot of plant mass in this car. I just quickly came on the back of it. Because I don't want any of this to go into the car. So it goes into the socket here that is actually onto a timer. It's all my sockets that are on, on the actual tanks themselves. On the rocks. Oh, that's a good one. It is a good place to light. You can see it from there. Uh, I did see babies in here yesterday. So let's uh, let's have a little look, guys. We're going to go. I'll change the position of this camera. I'll move you up there or something. And we'll have a look at the shrimp. Um, I'm going to try and include the shrimp feeding and the babies at least once in the video, once a week, so you can see the progress of the tanks. And uh, for other stuff, we'll uh, we'll just look at the shrimp. Basically, we'll, we'll because we have this stuff to do in here. There is other topics I want to cover, but I'm not sure if I'll cover it this week because um, some of the stuff, guys, I need to do is a lot of the stuff is very, very close camera work, and I'm really struggling with my eyes. But I've actually been to the optician yesterday, and I have a whole new set of glasses to come. So hopefully, that will, will fix my. Uh, issues with not seeing the camera properly because the, the biggest issue I have is when I'm filming is I actually can't see the screen 
this here, you probably hear me complaining about it a lot of the times. The actual screen on the camera, um, I, I actually can't see it an awful, awfully well. Like it's really out of focus. So if, if it's out of focus for me, it's very hard to get the camera in focus for you guys. Right? So this new batch of lenses that I'm going to get. For example, right? So these are my reading glasses here. My new set will be plus fours which is quite high magnification. These are not even plus twos, so it shows you how much my eyes have changed within a year. And um, I was going to say, but probably I should have more regular checkups, but every year is probably a bit normal for our wee camera eye bollocks checkups. Guys, I'm leather. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the time right? so I'll stop this here. Okay, shrimp lights, I've changed my glasses. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what damage we can do with our macro camera today. Um, I think I can't decide if I like the very very close macro or the scenic ones in our pictures, but we'll just see what works the best today for our stuff. So I don't, I'm not sure the camera can focus on anything here on that one. Maybe it can. But let's have a little look. We're going to start with our lovely little shrimp here. And guys, I think there might be change in the air for this time, actually. Because these shrimp are definitely looking like a specific type of shrimp. Like, look at this guy here. What would you call this? Like a shadow German Pinto? Something like that? Something like that. Okay, so I've stumbled them to how to breed this one through crossing uh, Galaxy Pintos with spotted red, red spotted German Pintos. You can see the like the traits of the German spotted ones there, and this one here. And I think what we're going to do right, is we're going to concentrate on the ones with big spots that are blue like this, and that's what's going to be in this tank, right? And everything else that is in here will be going into the cold tank, right? So there's a lot of them like this, because yeah, this was my attempt at making Galaxy. I can see how it might get there eventually, but it's, I think this is probably the closest it's going to get. I think it's the closest it's going to get there. So there's a nice little mix of babies and stuff in here now, which is nice to see. It shows you that the breeding is actually working in here. And these guys actually had another batch of very, very small babies, I think last week, and I can see one, but it's a way away at the back of town. I thought more would be at the front, but it is what it is. It's all good in the shampoo. All right, let's have a little look. Did I did I not put any solid food in these tanks here? I don't think I did, did I? Guys, wait a second. No, I'd be feeding powder for there. That's part of what I'm going to see them close up. These ones. So maybe we'll keep these ones here for another video of the project. We're just not going to see anything. Powder food means the shampoo spread out all over the place. Now let's get over to here. Our lovely red boa, red fish bones and red boa. There's definitely a lot of potential. Oh my god, guys, do you see what I see? I can see the first baby in this tank. You always tell when I'm very excited. We just said to leave in the corner. The camera can't quite pick up because it's so far away. But you see it on the left? The leaf, the left hand side of the leaf, is going to the side. I don't see anything else closer, but there's the first baby born in this tank. That didn't take long. You can, see, you can tell I get ultra impressed when I see this stuff. Let's zoom in. This, this looks a little bit overexposed. I'm not really going to get a better image than this just because of how far the shrimp are away, unfortunately. But yeah, good, good. Let me be in there already. Let me see up here. Crystals. Go above the glass a little bit because yeah, I don't know what it is. Is looking through that glass is makes the the image look really really poor. But let's look at. Yeah, but these are coming along nicely now in here because there was a big gap in breeding. You can see here, there's quite a few young again. It's looking good. Very girls. A lot of blur. These goldens in this tank are absolutely gorgeous. See them? Absolutely magnificent. 
And these guys have a lot of babies in here as well. Babies are spread out all over the place in here. So you'll, you'll always see like small ones, big ones and stuff all mixing together. So aren't they gorgeous? Here is empty. We have to test. You know, I actually found this hunk uh, a couple of days ago and I found it in two different places. Maybe I should have done that here because they, it's just a ball of shrimp here. Have a look for yourselves. A ball of shrimp. And there's a lot of small ones in here as well. It's always nice to see. So these are black fancy tigers. They look gorgeous, don't they? Black fancy tigers. Let's have a look at the black fancy tiger. Go the time. These guys have also had babies. I can actually see a baby in this tank a little bit further back. But, but this is the go tank, basically. For the tank above. So there's, you wouldn't think there's going to be very many babies in here, but I do see some babies in here. So this is where they come, it's like the halfway house, before we decide where they go. So let's have a little look at the crystals. Reading like the clappers, what we do works in marching tantrum. I love crystals, I love them so much. They're super easy to keep. Super easy to keep around. So we have some babies here. I'm going to try and get some footage of babies because this was the golden from last week. I think there's quite a few babies near the front here. There is, there, there's quite a few. You can just see, make it the blurriness of the camera. You guys will have to tell me, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the macro photography like this, or do you prefer like a, just a general picture like this? Watch, like this. Do you prefer this? Let me show you. Okay, so with this type of image... You're actually able to see the babies there. You can see that they're there. Not an awful lot, but it's like in focus. That's quite a good image as well, actually. Maybe, maybe we should stick with this. Over the other one. You know, these are very lovely, aren't they? They kind of got orange in them, golds. All the little babies. Very good. Okay, so let's hope and pray, because I, I bet this one a couple of the that there was going to be babies near the front. I'm going to keep it in the same mode that we just did. And we'll see if we can spot any babies. So this is the galaxy and um, boar. Oh, you can see a little baby there near the front. Galaxy and boar. It's kind of a mix of both of them. You can see galaxy and some of them you can see boar. And the other ones, we just move a wee bit. Now, there's not as many babies from here as there was the other bee though. There's one there just under the petri dish. Nothing, and all that's where there's one there. I can see them with my eyes, guys, which is impossible for the camera to pick up. Alright. Now, let me remember. Do I see shrimp in this tank? Do you shrimp? I think I did. I think I did. I think we're on the roll, guys. With babies recently. If I see any near the front that's obvious, I'll show you them. There's nothing obvious. Here though, these are uh, Raymond's lovely shrimp. I got quite a lot of them from them. And they're, I think they're a combination of uh, galaxies and boa mixed together. You can see blue bolts, blue steel is there. Well, look at the Super Crystal Rays, I'll go back a little bit, we'll keep it on Scenic Mode. Yeah, I think Scenic Mode guys. Uh, the Scenic Mode guys with this camera is better. I think you guys can see better, so I think we're going to stick with that. It just looks good, doesn't it? Let's see. Well, it's focused. See, I get to a bit here and I just want focus. It wants to focus. It wants to. Like there, that's reasonably nice, isn't it? It wants to focus, but it can't. So the point is in there. Uh, these guys are actually starting to breed. They're long last. 
These are the same as the ones that I just showed you, but these are, this was meant to be a go at time. And there has been problems with it for a while, but I can see when I look in the tank, you can see there, there's another baby there, that they actually are having their own young and stuff in here. See the difference there, guys, when it went from up there to being actually level, how the quality just changed. Hmm? Isn't that gorgeous? Let me see. So once I get my new glasses, hopefully I'm actually going to be able to see just a little bit better. Then uh, we should be able to actually start to focus on stuff for you guys just a little bit better. Did I struggle to show you these guys the last time? Because... Uh, they took the food away in the bar. They've caught the front. Oh, there's a couple of very girls here as well. Thank you very much. Let's say, guys, I'm just going to fix the exposure because I noticed here that they Oh, I can't fix the exposure. I'm just saying, all the efforts. Maybe that's something I have to do in a different mode. You can see here, that was a buried girl. That's a buried girl. So this is the first buried girl. Oh, there's another one at the back there as well. She's also buried. Uh, th this is the first of our red fancy tigers. This is their setup. This this girl is also buried, isn't it? This one. Lots of berries. I actually can't see the biggest shrimp in the tank, the biggest mama. But there's about ten shrimp in here. And we're just waiting for the baby super drop but you can see here as well guys look at look at this is what I always like to say to you guys is look at the reaction of the shrimp to the food right so they're they're still active but they're not mega mega active which would lead me to say this that after this video I should probably take that food out of the tank. Alright so the next time here I'm gonna be doing some different this is the the only it's not a problem tank, but I'm just not happy with the way the shrimplets are surviving and stuff, so and that's something we're going to have to look at me. So these guys have had a lot of babies, you don't see that here, right? You're going to see that here and now you can see them in the gravel. See all the babies? So this is a mixed tank. So all the shrimp in the tank all the other tanks that I don't want breeding, just keep a line better than it is. Like for example, this is this would be a fancy crystal black, but it doesn't look like a fancy crystal black, right? So th that type of shrimp comes in here. And let's see, can we see any more babies under the dish? I'll actually show you the three piles of uh, food here, because I put the three piles in. Let's see. Because yeah, the, these guys are just, uh, this, the population here is exploding. Yeah, I can see babies everywhere in this tank. We're looking at the petri dish at the bar. Where's the dish? But well, you can't see. See, this is the issue with this karma. I can see a lot of little baby shrimp actually. Loads. It might be better if I try and get it in focus like this first and then show you the baby shrimp like that. You see that? Little babies. Our babies. So this tank is doing really, really good. So there is our overview of our trims. And uh, let's maybe just take that camera down here and we'll look over here for a second because I didn't show you these ones at all, did I? One moment, Chris. Hi right, guys, let me show you the OP tank here. I don't know, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure if this will work. Zoom in. No, oh, moving the camera up and down. This way. Right, so uh, these guys are breathing like the clappers in here. I love my opera early. So these these guys have been getting powdered food again, the same as the actual Neo Caradina. Because I see a much better breeding result feeding powder foods into some of my tanks compared to other ones. And a lot of it guys is to do with um, the actual ecosystem in which the shrimp live in the environment themselves you've got to be mindful that if you put too much food into a bee shrimp food a bee shrimp tank as an example you're going to pollute the tank but it's not the same for uh, tanks that are above a certain pH I would say right? because there's more bacteria and whatever else in this type of tank um, the, the, the tanks don't tend to get as polluted right? so pollution in a bee shrimp tank is really really bad 
pollution in a, a higher pH tank, like above of seven, isn't much. It isn't so big an issue. Right? So bee shrimp are very, very sensitive. Hello guys, welcome back. It is day two of the week for me and yeah, we are planning to do a water change in my blue bolt tank down here because um, they have had batch after batch of babies and I'm not really seeing a very high survival rate, rate, rate so I do the same things in that tank that I do with all my other tanks so it's definitely not something like overfeeding but one of the things it might be is that the pH is on the very low side, right? So to give you an idea, let's have a little pickup of our pH meter. And I want to tell you guys that it says 5.05 and it's just going down. I actually noticed when the probe was lowered there. Yeah. When the probe was lowered, further down it actually went more lower right so it's just hovering above five i wouldn't be surprised if this goes even lower yeah right and i think what's happening here is it's just too acidic the water five is is a very low ph for keeping bee shrimp now my other tanks are low but they're not that low let's have a look at this one this is one that has a compartment in the back that is filled with ada v1 and yeah it's gone up already 5.08 so i think 5.9 i think this is maybe on the low side or it could be something as simple as i've added too many leaves into that tank uh, when i set it up and um, because i have noticed that the leaves in this tank the, the shrimp are not munching them away like all the other tanks so it could be that, I did notice when I moved some of the moss yesterday in the tank that there was an abundance of walnut leaves that were still not eaten and I, I think we put walnut leaves in here probably a couple of weeks ago so they're not eating them either and this tank has, has always had a different colour in the water compared to the other ones right so I'm going to move you guys a little bit closer over here we're going to do a water change in here, we're going to make it a big one as well I have my water prepped all over there already and uh, yeah we're going to see how that goes and we'll know pretty soon if it is that or not it's probably most likely it is that and um, after that guys i thought today that we would uh, start to tidy up some of these tanks you know guys it's bizarre i spent hours looking for this thing someone stole my comb for my head and it wasn't it was in the tub down here i literally spent hours looking for this thing today and I don't have anything else that is good enough to remove duckweed and stuff with this because yeah, some of my tanks, I can't even see the shrimp properly because a lot of these tanks have uh, so much floating mass in the top and it's just not good, it's not good to have this amount, amount of floating mass in the top because it doesn't make good view for you either to see a dull tank, even when there's shrimp in it, if it's a dull tank it's just hard for you to see so in, maybe in a future tank what we might do is we might actually bring the filtration to the front <laughs> Right, because all of our filtration is at the back of the tank with the flow pointing forward and all the stuff that's on the top of the plants all comes and sits at the front, doesn't it? Yes, like this, look, it all sits at the front. All my tanks are the same. All the mass is sitting at the front, which makes it hard for us to see. So I was thinking maybe in a test tank or something like that, we might actually put the sponge filters just at the sides like this pointing backwards, the nozzles point backwards because then that should keep all the front clean or we could actually remove all the floating plants but yeah, you guys you know, you know what it's like trying to remove tons and tons of duckweed but oh by the way guys before we go any further I keep on meaning to do this at the beginning of videos if I've done it already in the previous clip just ignore this part but we'll get some uh, scrolling credits up here of all my channel supporters Thank you very much for helping me fund all my stuff, like this new camera that I have here. Unfortunately, the camera is, uh, its mic is not compatible with all my other mics, so that's why the sound in the previous clip was kind of rubbish. But I'm actually today using another camera with this setup, and I'm going to match up the volume and stuff so that it looks normal to you guys, at least. I hope that, I hope, hope this one's going to work up there, you little bugger, because you're also on up there as well 
And so yeah, thank you guys for all the channel support. No, the other thing as well, guys, I would also like to thank you for the 100,000 subscribers. I can't believe I've actually got that much already. And uh, yeah, big big thank you for that. It means a lot. It means a lot that people, after all these years, still watch my videos. I try and keep them as simple as possible. I know I ramble a lot of my videos, but it's called YouTube for a reason. It's all about moi and my shrimp, isn't it? You can hopefully you guys watch it for me as much as you do my shrimp, but I know that's not always the case. If I if I made my videos just about myself, I probably wouldn't get any views, but. <laughs> Anywho guys, let's get down here and we'll start this nonsense. Alright guys, so here is the tank here. I think what we'll do is just uh, take out as much water as we can. This might be a little bit of a slow process because th this tank is so close to the ground. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, let's uh, stop blathering and just get this started. Because often if you're having issues in a tank, a good water change can often be the solution. Alright, so let's get this started. It's crazy isn't it, after all these years, I still do water changes like this. But it's my preferred method guys, just because it gives me that little bit of exercise. You know? So let me pan you down a little bit so you can actually see the tank. Wait a minute, if I pan you down low enough, can you see this corner? You can. Now what we'll do, right, just so this is not an absolutely boring as hell video, we're actually going to put some food into this tank here because, yeah, there's tons and tons of babies in here now. Let me see, I'll just grab a packet of food. And I'm not going to put too much in here because I actually fed these yesterday as well. So, yeah, let's put this in here. This is Shurakura Ibidama. Awesome food, mostly, I think it's all plant material in this, doesn't pollute the water and it keeps its shape really really well, like um, I, I tested this in a tank a couple of days ago and it was like an hour later, the food was still intact and I was able to lift it up with a pair of stainless steel tweezers and move it to another tank, which is what you want. So yeah, we'll try and get as many buckets out of this as possible. I'm aiming guys for possibly around 80%. Can you guys see the shrimp down there? Let's see, where's my finger? There, can you see them? I'm hoping to get at least 80% of the water out here. And that will hopefully give us a little bit of a reset. I don't want to really do too much. The thing that has been bugging me about some of my tanks is just the sheer volume of floating plants I have in them. Some of them, I'm going to keep on talking to you here guys, but I'm just going to quickly um, to this bucket here. You can still hear me because it's a wireless mic. And you can look at the shrimp at the same time. Oh, can't talk for that long. Oh. Yeah, you can see all the shrimp down in the corner, can't you? As I'm emptying this bucket on the other side of the room. But this water that I'm pouring out, I probably should have showed you that there. It is very brown. It's very brown from uh, it's very brown from all the tannins, so it's quite possible looking back into the tank itself that maybe I have just added too many leaves to this at once because I think you've got to remember as well leaves oh pardon me leaves are a food source for a shrimp as well so if you add too many at the start maybe that could be the problem too too many leaves could be a problem. Because uh, they will eventually go off and produce nitrates and whatever else. And, you know, I'm, I'm blithered now, aren't I? I'm blithered. Yes, let's get this done. Let's get it done. I'm just going to change this right now. Hopefully you can see the shrimp in the other tank next to us. Okay, so there's baby shrimp in here. There's quite a lot of baby shrimp in here, but that's not the problem. The, the, the females are actually having the young in here and then the young are there. But guys, I can go back a few months and there was baby shrimp in here and the survival rate was really low. And I'm overfeeding the tanks. You can see what I do with my other tank. So, let me see, can you guys see this? I'm not sure if that will come out in camera, but the water is yellow. 
it is yellow and most of my other Akadama tanks Akadama, not Akadama, Amazonia tanks the water is crystal clear right and the tank that you're looking at right now with the shrimp on the left there you see how they're all hoarding up they're all bowling up there this one this is the same soil it's exactly the same soil so this is clear this is yellow so I probably just put too much leaves into this tank to start with I can still see loads of them at the back leaves yeah it is just full of big leaves look let's put them in there because there's, there's loads of shrimp in this tank I've probably added just a wee bit too many leaves so these ones are munched away quite well right, so that's enough this is enough I think because I've not even shown you the leaves at the front here guys look let me just empty this try to save the snail on my finger another big leaf but yeah, there's, I put, I, this is the issue I think look I put just far too many leaves in such a small tank and this, this was one I put in last week look another one so it's alright having some leaves but don't go berserk with them let me empty this and we'll start to we'll start to fill this tank up I'm just going to move that out of the way so you can see the shrimp yeah who would have thought huh who would have thought adding too much leaves would be an issue now I'm not 100% sure this is the issue but it's the only thing I can think of when my water is ready to go in here, I'm just going to dry the floor because I don't, I don't like to walk on wet surfaces, guys. Because uh, you will get athlete's foot. Let me grab my water as you enjoy the beautiful shrimp over there. Yeah, 100,000 subscribers, huh? Who would have thought? Me, little Mark, would have got 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, thank you very much for that guys, it's really appreciated knowing that uh, you guys actually do want to see my content let me just turn this on so as you guys know I have a remote control for this kind of stuff I think I got this idea from MD Fish Tanks a long time ago and he said he brought a control of Amazon and I looked and I went and got one Right, so I'm going to keep this on relatively low in the beginning guys because I don't want this to actually churn up the substrate in here like this so while this is filling up I'm going to put you back up on the table up here right and we'll talk about something else while that fills up and um, I thought I'd move the dummy camera because I'm going to call my camera the dummy camera now because it is uh, it's on it's actually recording the voice that you're hearing now I'll put it in front of that tank so you can watch the shrimp feed while we talk about what we're going to do next I think I will do one tank with you guys because this next part is probably going to be rather boring and it's basically we're going to remove the duckweed and all the floating plants and some of the tanks because yeah I have for example a tank like this here right there is a lot of baby galaxies and baby boa in this tank right now and it's almost impossible for me to film because of the amount of floating mass that's in the top it basically blocks it all the light and it makes it really really hard for the cameras to pick up all this stuff in the tank right so we'll do this one today and I think it's a good one to show you as well because our Nuri Pink has uh, flowered in here uh, you know uh, the other thing I wanted to say as well I, this is called a Nuri Pink this crypt but um, it doesn't really look that pink so I'm not entirely sure it is a Nuri Pink after all these years of me thinking it was called a Cryptocornia Nuri Pink um, I think it might be something else or maybe it's pink if it's in better conditions or different conditions with CO2 or something like that but it's definitely never been pink in my tanks I can see in the leaves it might be like a tiger stripe pink in it but it's not pink pink and I have seen some really nice pink nuri in some other people's tanks right so yeah enough blithering mark let's get on with doing this okay, so this is the offending tank here and you can't see my beautiful face but 
Who cares about rip that, right? So I do here I have a bucket of water here and we're going to remove as much of the floating mass in this tank up here with our little comb here and then hopefully guys I'll be able to show you some of the lovely galaxy and uh, some of the lovely boa that actually live in this tank because right now it's kind of impossible right so let me kind of zoom in a little bit and see if we can work this camera better there you go so that's a little bit closer right, so just a simple thing to do here guys right, is you go like this with your comb and I, some, I like to actually go like this all over the surface first just a little bit because this tends to knock off all the little shrimp right, and there might not be any on here but it's a good practice to do this get your comb like this right comb like this like that and then can I go down the way let me see can it's straight into a bucket like this right, so if there is any shrimp in there if there is any baby shrimp in there because the bucket is white we'll see them dart down to the bottom I don't think there is in, in this one but you can see, I can see that there's ram's horn snails and whatever else and this to me this is by far the best way for us to actually do this all right let's bring it up here again right, so we got a lot out in that first one right, and this is actually something that I need to do on a regular basis that I don't really tend to show you guys because it's this is kind of boring this bit isn't it kind of boring but you guys probably want to see everything in the shrimp room let's get this out here like so and then it's going to go into our little container down here and let's see can you guys see any shrimp coming off i don't i don't see anything nothing at all but it's a good practice to do this right let me see i'm going to try and get some of the duckweed at the very back to the front right so if you have salvinia as an example you can use something else to do your removals let me show you what I mean because I have another tool for Sylvania and it's also a comb that I've commandeered and adjusted for our purpose let me show you what it is and so it's just another comb but I've broken off some of the teeth in the middle and this is really really good guys for can you see this tank you can this is really, really good for removing just salvinia. You see it because the teeth are so widely spread apart. I can go into a tank like this and just lift it up. It's actually very good if it's mixed in with duckweed as well. You can do the same thing as what we talked about before. Put it into your tub. I'm trying to zoom in and out and stuff with this. It's a new camera as you can tell. And uh, yeah, we are just trying to get things working well. Uh, so, so this this actually does a really, really good job of actually helping us remove our stuff, right? So you can see that's almost two tanks I've done. A couple of scoops. All the stuff is in here, and I can't see any baby shrimp at all. None. But it doesn't mean there's none in there yet, right? So just persevere with it, guys. Persevere with it. Let the stuff sit in there for a little while. Because yeah, little shrimp are clingers. They're basically cling to everything, right? So just give them a, a little bit of a chance. And you'll be dandy. Let me bring you back up here again. So that is how we do it. Guys, let's finish this by sitting out there and finishing the coffee, all right? Uh, you know what, guys? I actually forgot that I promised to show you these shrimplets in here, so that's what we're going to do now. Just let me get a quick drink of the uh, coffee. Let's break out the macro camera. All right, so we actually do have quite a lot of baby young in here. You know what's a little bit bad about this camera is I'm looking at a way down here and your lens is up here. 
I don't know if it's noticeable, but um, yeah, let's see what we can do here because yeah, there's quite a lot of these little guys in here, and you guys will probably want to revel in the successes of this shrimp channel just as much as me. So yeah, you can see there, just in that image there, there's like three or four. One there in the middle. Oh, that's one there in the middle, one near the edge. I would like to maybe zoom in on some of these. Let's switch to macro mode and we'll see if we can get some footage of maybe one or two of them near the front. But there's so many of them and these, these shrimp are super active guys, super active as in it's almost like they see that I come to the tank and they come to me like 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 they would do as if they were fish. Let's see, can we see this guy here? We can't have a hole very still, you can. Yeah, so there's a lot of them in here. There's 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 like a good twenty plus little shrimp like that like this. Just all over the place in the gravel. Let's see, is there any over this side? There's one there. Let's see if this camera will focus itself. Dead. Dead kinda. And so you just have to bear in mind that I'm actually shooting through glass at an angle. This looks like some kind of pinto, doesn't it? So we're never always going to see everything perfect now. There's a shrimp here. I don't think it can focus in this mode that far back. Let's change the mode. You little bugger. Zoom in. As far as I can zoom in on this mode. Oh yeah, it's really nice to see it all coming together and like baby shrimplets everywhere. In nearly all of the tanks. I just think it's awesomely good guys. Guys, let me finish it off by saying thank you for watching today. If you have enjoyed today's video, then please do like and subscribe on there. Guys, if you want to, oh, I can't do that thing because of this tracking rubbish. If you want to, I'll put something up this side. God damn you camera. I'll put a video up here that you can watch. <laughs> that will be related to my channel somehow. Please, if you, if you love my content, please watch another. Thank you for watching. Bye.